it's July 2020 and I'd like to do a plant tour of the plants that I keep in my bedroom. Um, it's been a really great growing season this year because like many of you I've spent a lot of hours indoors this year spring and summer and so I've had a lot more time to give care and love to my indoor plants and so I uh, just like to show you the exciting developments and progress and uh, show you what all plants I have in my bedroom. Starting with this plant I acquired it this spring and I actually bought this plant from a local garden center. This is a philodendron gloriosum. And I had a phase where I started becoming obsessed with any sort of plants that had heart-shaped leaves. Uh, and so I bought this plant and it was a little bit of a rehab project. The lady who sold me the plant, she had it under a grow light and it was in the basement and it wasn't even in the main part of the store because it had looked really sickly when she had got it from uh, the grower. And so it was looking really bad. And so this was the original leaf that was on the plant. And you can see that there's some burn marks um, and some of damage to the leaves down here. But otherwise, you know, it was looking okay. It also had this leaf as well. This was the second leaf that came up. And again, it came with these burn marks that you can see as well. So what I did was I repotted the plant and I created my own soil mixture. And I made sure that this runner was above the soil line because when I first got it, it was buried under there. And that was what I researched, a surefire way of killing the plant. So I made sure to bury the roots that were coming from this uh, node over here, this runner, but to keep the runner above the ground so that it can kind of creep uh, on top of the soil and continue sending new growth. So under my care, this is the first leaf that came up and you can tell she is huge and gorgeous. There's no burn marks. It's very smooth and velvety. It's emerald green and it's got a perfect little heart shape. And a couple of weeks ago, a little spike started emerging and this is going to unfurl into a brand new leaf. So I'm really excited about that. This soil mixture, by the way, is an extremely loose mixture. You can see that it doesn't clump whatsoever. And I had done a lot of research about soil structures for philodendrons, and they love fast draining soil. And as you can see, this plant is pretty happy since he, what, she uh, was repotted. So I have a very loose mixture of orchid bark that I hand crushed and then also uh, tore up little pieces of sphagnum moss. There's tons of perlite in here. There's a little bit of an all-purpose indoor potting mix as well. And uh, for organic matter, I put some worm casings in there as well. And I water this guy only once a week and made sure to use a terracotta pot. That way, if there's any extra moisture, the terracotta will wick it away. And so, so far it's been really, really happy just being watered once a week. I fertilize this guy maybe once every third week with a uh, organic fertilizer that has a very low numbers. So the MPK numbers are uh, actually all less than one. So just, um, it's been living up to its name and I'm just really happy that I was able to rescue this guy from the plant store. This plant I got at the same time. This is my Raphidophora and as you can see it's got this another cane down here with new growth coming out and it was about as t came to my chest height when I first got it so this was the top leaf and just in a short few months it has climbed up all the way up to the top 
and I can't even reach as high as it is now. So it's about seven feet tall. So it put out about three to four feet of growth and I'm probably gonna have to propagate it soon because otherwise I won't be able to move this guy at all. But interestingly, I don't know what these little yellow marks are. It could be from a thrip infection that was from the plant store again. Maybe a little bit too much sun as well. Comment below if you know what this, this is. But when I brought it to my home, I kept it a little bit further away from this east facing balcony window and all the new growth is perfect. No burn marks, no yellowing, no brown tips. So it's been doing really, really well. And again, I have this on a once a week soil mixture, which um, it's a fairly loose mixture from the soil. You can sort of see a little indentation in the soil line here because my dog loves to stick her nose in the soil. Yes, talking about you. Over here, I have a Monstera, and this year I trained it up this moss pole. I've had this Monstera for about two years, and unfortunately it suffered a really bad thrip infection. And so I had to start all over again. We cut them down to the nodes down here and then water propagated it. And as soon as we put saw roots, um, we planted it in soil and it actually adjusted very well. And we did that in the beginning of the season. And uh, so far it's been doing really, really well. I have a similar soil composition for this uh, Monstera as well. A lot of orchid bark, a lot of perlite as you can see, and just to make sure that the majority of the contents in this plastic grower's pot is actually occupied by the root system and not the soil, because if it's swimming in the soil, the roots are going to sit in that water and this plant is not going to be happy. So about 80% of what's in here is actually the roots themselves. It has a very healthy root system and when I water it, the water drains very, very quickly and uh, that's what Monstera like. And so it's been really happy in this location. And you can see these lighter colored leaves like this one this one, this one, and this one. These are all new leaves. And in general, it's Monstera leaves. New leaves will come up unfenestrated like this small guy over here. And then eventually, it, as it gets more, more and more mature, it will develop these fenestrations. However, I think that the plant has been so happy this year that even these new leaves that are unfurling unfurled with the fenestrations already in them. So I think to me, and they were also very large leaves as well, so to me it's a sign that the plant is very happy in its current location and it's really growing and it's thriving and it's doing really well. One thing that I learned was that when you get yellow leaves from too much sunlight, the plant can actually revert the yellowing. So this, pl this plant, over the winter, I had moved it to a different location where it was getting a lot of direct western sun. And uh, I think what happened was the direct sun was too harsh and I actually started burning this leaf and then almost half of this leaf turned yellow. As soon as I brought it to a location where it was getting morning sun instead, uh, and then also this shaft of light comes through here and it kind of barely grazes this plant. So it's uh, bright indirect light over here. The yellowing actually reverted back to green. So 
sometimes yellowing leaves can actually fix themselves. So I was really pleased to see that. Um, this here is also one of my newer plants that I've collected. It is my Calathea orbifolia. And as you can see, she is just stunning. She has put out so much new growth that these light colored leaves are all new. This leaf, this leaf here, this leaf over here, and then the one underneath. And she's just been doing her thing. The thing that, you know, I I'm a little sad about are these brown edges, you know, I just can't keep the humidity going in the bedroom because otherwise it's just uncomfortable for people. Ideally, it would do well with humidity 55% and up, but, you know, I think what makes me feel better is that when I bought this plant from the store, it actually already came with these brown edges and this store has five humidifiers running at the same time and it's probably 70% humidity. So I don't feel so bad having these crispy edges because even in a perfect environment like a garden center, greenhouse situation, they still have brown edges. So I'm just going to accept this plant for what it is it's going to have some brown, but that's okay because, I mean, look at these patterns and these round leaves. They're just so cool looking. And the soil, I have something interesting going on with the soil. Underneath the two-thirds, I have a very loose straining mixture similar to my philodendron mix. So with the orchid bark, the... Um, sphagnum moss and the perlite mixture with uh, some cutting that into some regular garden soil. On the top layer here I just have some regular uh, indoor potting soil to just kind of cover it like a blanket so that way the feet stay dry but then uh, it doesn't lose too much humidity because of all the plants this one is probably the hardest for me to figure out its watering. It will tell you when it's thirsty because the leaves will start drooping down, but um, I just want to make sure that I'm not over or under watering it. So just making sure that the feet are dry and then the top doesn't lose too much moisture. So there's two different kinds of soil uh, actually layers in within the pot here, which I actually hand painted here. So this is a little design I uh, painted myself. So it was a little fun COVID quarantine project. Let me know if you have any questions about how I care about my plants in the comments below. If you have anything to add or any tips or tricks, or if you have these same plants as well, I'll be happy to talk to any of you guys just to see if uh, we can share some knowledge. Thanks for watching. Thank you.